Guess it's that time then. Hello and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. Today's a special episode, just one habitat going into the zoo today. We're finally up to the polar bears. Polar bears are, well, let's just say they're difficult customers. I'm sure it's entirely accurate, but polar bears take up more room than any other animal. That's a significant obstacle, particularly when you're working in a franchise zoo. Considering there's just two of them, I need to reserve almost 4,000 meters squared in land space, plus over 1,000 for water as well. It's a pretty daunting task to make something that's big enough. Thankfully, I've been planning for this habitat for a really long time, so plenty of room down here for it to go. But to put this into perspective, the African elephants here, they need a lot of room too. So if we take a look at the land size here, around 4,800 there. So even the elephants have been outbeaten by the polar bears. Hey ho, let's get on with it. So a daunting task ahead of me here. I've created a couple of polar bear habitats before and hands up, they've always looked horrendous. When you've got an animal that needs all this room, it's very easy to fall into the trap of having too much empty space. There's also a big issue with the shape. A rectangle for this habitat would look very strange. And when I did the African elephant habitat in this zoo, I had quite a lot of success with making that into a circular shape. So I figured for this one, we were gonna do something similar, but there is also the obstacle where I don't like putting the animals from the colder biomes in outdoor enclosures. I have strong feelings about the fact that if an animal needs snow in their enclosure and you're building this in a temperate environment, this really needs to be within a building because adding all that snow, it would be incredibly difficult to maintain that in a temperate zoo if it was purely outdoors. Something like this, should always be within a climate controlled environment. So that means making a building, an incredibly large building, which is fairly intimidating for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm a competent builder in Planet Zoo. I've been doing this a long time. I know my way around the build pieces and the scenery pieces, but building for the polar bears is so incredibly different than building for any other animal. As I say, I've done this a few times now. I have made other polar bear habitats before and they've been complete failures on all those occasions. So for this one, I have been planning for a really long time. I've had a strategy in my head for a good few months now. Going with the circle approach, it seemed obvious choice would be to make a dome. Me and domes, it's a love-hate relationship with domes. Done well, they can look really cool. Done badly, they look awful. And to be fair, it's not really even all our fault. I have a bit of a bone to pick with Planet Zoo. So in the build pieces, we get these really funky, geometrically shaped glass pieces. And first looking at that, you'd be like, oh, this is totally to make a geodesic dome. Well, they would be if they were the right size. The window shape in Planet Zoo, it's all equal size on the three sides. For a geodesic dome, you'd need that to be shorter on one side and then equal length on the other two. So it makes it literally impossible to make a dome exclusively out of the glass pieces, which is a bit of a shame because they are very pretty pieces. Anyway, for this dome, I did struggle for a few hours figuring out how to get the pieces to work. I managed to get three layers of the bubble glass pieces at the top of the dome to work. After that, it all starts going a bit wrong. So we're leaving that as the three layers at the top. For the structural pieces around the dome, I'm really happy that it's actually been made a lot easier to do this since Planet Zoo introduced the plaster block pieces in the Africa pack. Prior to this, I would use art shapes and it never looked quite right. See, the concept for this dome, I've been working on this concept for a really long time. Back in, I think it was spring 2020, I created what I called a sustainable biodome in Planet Zoo. And this was based on the concept of renewable energy and 
biodiversity. For this concept, you can take some learning from real life environmentally sustainable buildings. The main features being you want it to be a green roof, so vegetation on the roof. You also want a lot of natural light, so you're not reliant on electrical lighting. And you should also consider natural ventilation. So yeah, early doors with Planet Zoo, I had a go at making one when we didn't even have green roofs in the game at that point. So it was a bit of a struggle and it looked okay, but it wasn't quite right. I had another go at this concept when the Southeast Asia DLC launched with that one. Yeah, again, it looked all right. It wasn't fantastic. It had some issues for sure. So it's been a good few years now where I put that idea to bed for a while. But when I first came up with the concept of an every animal franchise zoo, I immediately thought, oh dear, I'm gonna need polar bears in there somewhere. And a little thought did pop into my head. You know, you've done those domes before, you've done this biodiverse environment before. Is it time to do it again and do it right this time? So indeed, I am doing this again and hopefully, fingers crossed, this is coming out okay this time. Like I mentioned, there's certain pieces in the game have been added since I last tried this that are certainly helping. We've got these lovely plaster pieces that I can use for the structure. There's the green roof that certainly helps. And of course, I have got a lot more building experience under my belt since the last attempt, so can't deny that's gonna help some. Even with all that knowledge, there were several attempts at making this dome before I found the pieces that work that I was happy with. If I can offer any advice for dome building, there's a couple of key things you need to remember for them. Firstly, I'd say don't make it too complicated. Stick with two or three different building pieces rather than an eclectic style made up of loads of them. It really starts to look messy once you get to the replication stage. Another suggestion would be try and give it a low profile so don't make it too tall. In a similar vein, the outside of the dome, because we're limited to making the sides quite flat and horizontal, putting adjacent structural elements on the outside is a good idea. Otherwise, it ends up looking a bit like a giant cake. This is why I've got the curved green roof on the outside bit above the path. Now, green roofs in general, I'm a real fan of green roofs and it's a real thing in real life that a lot of building and construction companies are starting to consider in their builds. Across the world in towns and cities, we're getting loads of these biodiverse buildings going up, so a lot of greenery in the architecture. It's funny actually, whilst I was building this and specifically putting in that curved green roof, it reminds me of a real life build project in um, close to where I live. This was a new built hospital that installed a green roof and they had nothing but problems with this biodiverse green roof. First of all, they didn't think um, how it would work in real life because it was a green roof that goes, it was a sloped roof that went from the ground level right up to the top of the building, which was about four or five stories high. And of course, when they opened it, being that this was a grass roof, everyone thought it was something that they were supposed to walk on. So they had people walking up the roof from the ground level up to the top of the building. So yeah, that was cool cordoned off pretty sharpish. The other problem they had, now I used to drive past this building, I'd say three or four times a week. And after a month or so, you could visibly see that the green roof wasn't looking quite so green. It was starting to look a bit brown and very sparse. For that problem, I heard a rumor that it was a maintenance person unplugging the irrigation system every night. They didn't realize that that needed to stay plugged in. So just human error on that one rather than poor architecture. Anyway, it's been a good few years now that this has been up and it's looking a lot better now. So obviously the green roof is working for them now. Anyway, that's a really long winded story that you didn't ask for. Whoops. I do tend to get carried away with stuff that really interests me like that. I work in the construction industry in my real job, so I know an awful lot about real life architecture and why things are built the way they're built. So it is nice to occasionally add this into how I'm building stuff in Planet Zoo as well. Right, so back to talking about the polar bears. The bears need a lot of space, but they also need a lot of water space. I thought it'd be interesting to have the water outside and the land inside for this one. So after a bit of fiddling around, I was able to make it so that the water line starts where the dome ends sort of thing. And that leads you into an underwater viewing area at the back. 
I was vaguely worried with this that the bears wouldn't be able to navigate into the water because the game does struggle sometimes if you put the water too close to the path. But thankfully, once the bears went in, they made a beeline for the water and they were able to swim about in that no problem. What's also good for the polar bears, thankfully, they didn't add them needing a deep water requirement, so didn't have to worry about making the underwater viewing area really deep. They're fine with the rather shallow pool I've added here. A pleasant surprise with this build. The bears are a lot more tolerant with plants and trees than they used to be. Last time I tried building for a polar bear, it was so bare. There was nothing in the enclosure other than space. This time around, I was pleasantly surprised to see that they were way more tolerant of me putting in grasses and bushes and trees. So it's not just a bunch of rocks in there. This really helps fill up the space so it doesn't look so sparse considering how much room they need. The only problem I had with this build in terms of plants, the green roof I'd built on the outside of the dome around the path. Without even thinking, I'd added to this a load of the biodiverse plantings that you get in the temperate biome. So there was some Yorkshire grass on there, some buttercups, some daisies. Yeah, I totally didn't consider that that roof is gonna be counted towards being inside the polar bear's habitat. And of course, polar bears don't like those plants. So that was a job I had at taking them all out again. In the last update, Planet Zoo's added a really great feature with the planting where if you put a plant in there that the animal doesn't like, it shows up red and you actually have an option now where you can click the delete button and remove all those plants in one go. The problem I had here was that not all of the roof was considered to be inside the habitat barrier. So clicking that get rid of button, it got rid of some of the planting on the roof, but not all of it. And it looked really weird. So yeah, I had to spend a bit of time going around and deleting all the individual plants off the roof. Thankfully as well, having to delete all those plants, the roof still looks okay with the um, the base level of the green roof. It would look nicer if I had the daisies and the buttercups on there, but hey ho, the polar bears don't like it, so we've got to give the polar bears what they want, haven't we? In the end, all these elements came together rather nicely, I think, and I'm fairly pleased with what I came up with for this concept. So here it is, what do you think? Welcome to the Polar Dome. Indeed, this is my take on an environmentally sustainable, modern habitat build for the most demanding animal in Planet Zoo. I hope you're happy, polar bears. You're taking up about a tenth of the entirety of the zoo there. So yeah, a tough build, this one. Where it's positioned here, yeah, the pathing isn't entirely right. Um, it didn't fit exactly where I wanted it to. So it is a little shoehorned in in the corner, but hey-ho, it works enough for me. Let's take a look inside. Now that's a nice path. Oh, apart from the fact that there's guests walking through the wall there, it will have to fix that. But just look at that view. <laughs> Oh, it's just perfect. I love it. 360 views for our guests here. They can look at the polar bears at any angle. The way the walls slope down to that nice smooth finish, that's exactly what I was going for. Just adds to that circular element so it's not just a square big box. Metallic pieces on the solid side of the wall. I think that's a nice touch. And the green roof there connecting with the path underneath. Hey, if I once it's a concept I came up with that actually works. I was a bit worried when I first made the path in here. I went with a 10 meter path and I did worry that that might be too big. But now looking inside the habitat, I think that's necessary. Shall we go and have a look at the underwater area? So this is the polar bear's luxury outdoor swimming pool. Guests can look from the bridge or they can go to the underwater viewing area. Got some over there now. Oh, because there's a polar bear in the water. Yay. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, they look so happy. Let's view it how the guests view it. So, can't see much here. No, no swimming action. Hmm. Oh, oh, they got out the water, that's why. Having to sit off on the ice rocks then. Yeah, let's see how that looks then. Uh, yeah, much better. I'd be well pleased with that view. Good idea putting this outside, I think. Breaks up the space a little bit and the guests do get a little closer to the polar bears here. 
Now, what are you up to? Are you going back in the water? Can't make up their mind. Now, here we go, going for another swim. And that is just adorable. They're so sweet when they're swimming. So outside space, I would say I'm really happy with this. I don't know about you, but I think it works really well. Just show you the fountains at the back here. That was a little add on there and got custom drainage grates. Always love adding the little grates anywhere I can. Still can't get over how big this is for two bears. They're so space hungry. Just look at all that room inside there. Speaking of, we haven't looked inside the dome yet, have we? So this is the climate controlled land area for the bears. A huge snowy landscape. Over in the corner is a little shelter here. Just adds to the ambience and gives them a little privacy whilst they're sleeping. I like that one of the updates in the game has changed how much plants you can have in the polar bear habitat and this is so much better. Just that little bit of green and brown dotted around, it really changes how this looks to where it was just all snow before. This is a really big space, so you can imagine how this would look if it didn't have any of that stuff in. Still swimming, I see. Where's the other pair? There is two in here. There you are. And what are you up to? Oh, speedy bear, out for a run. <laughs> what are you doing? Off somewhere in a hurry. Let's see. Um, just got the zoomies, I guess. I can almost see their mind working. They're all up to something. Oh, snowball. That's why. It's figuring out how it wants to play with the snowball. Oh, how cute. Little nudge there. <laughs> Yeah, very interested in the enrichment there. I did put quite a few snowballs in. I don't normally bother with the snowball because it looks a bit weird, but well, considering this is a snowy biome habitat, I went a bit overboard with them. Anyway, that's the inside of the dome there. I do have something else I wanted to show you that I built with this habitat too. This was a bit of an afterthought because there's no pathing to the dome from this side of the zoo. You go down these steps and this is a little underground frozen tunnel. It's a bit rough currently, I didn't spend a lot of time on this, but this is a way to connect this side of the zoo to the underground viewing area. Ugh, very rough. <laughs> Bits of wall sticking out there, have to definitely fix that. Overall, I am very pleased with how this habitat turned out. I think I've done the polar bears proud here. They set me a monumental challenge, but I feel like I stepped up when I needed to and come up with something that looks really nice. Hopefully you think I did a good job too. Let me know in the comments. As ever, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.